first of all, John this season is taking care of business like right out the gate. Uh, we're getting to see lots of Lamar strains blossoming and he's coming in clutch in a lot of situations. So what has been the most rewarding part of portraying John this season so far? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for saying that. And uh, I just I think it's cool to see sort of different sides of John. You know, when we meet him, he's at the front of the ship. He's a navigator. He's kind of silly, jokey, but he has taken his job pretty seriously. So uh, I kind of made a joke uh, with the first few episodes. It was like, leave it to Lamar because scrambling, trying to figure out, you know, ways to to fix things or, you know, fix a problem or whatever. So uh, it's been it's been cool. And then you also realize sort of how important John's job is on this ship, you know. And I know a lot of people were sad when my character left the bridge to go to engineering. Um, but I think we've done a good job. Season two was a little, you know, we didn't really know kind of what was going on with John, but I think we, with this season, we've sort of figured a little, you know, figured it out a little bit, but uh, it's been fun. You know, like when you get to watch it and you see John actually saying all them science techno babble, it's like, Oh, right. I did that. I said that I forgot about that. I actually had a question about that. I I said, you do a lot of technically difficult dialogue and I'm always impressed at how fluidly you get out that information. So do you have to do a couple takes for it or are you just like gifted in engineer talk? You know what? I'm going to tell you what it is. Our show takes a long time to shoot anyway when we're on set, right? And as an actor, you never want to be the reason, you never want to hold up camera. So when I get these very long, you know, difficult sort of speeches i try to do as much prep as i can beforehand so by the time i get to set i can just sort of rattle it off but then also trying to make it make sense because i don't know half i don't know half this stuff means you know so i have to try to connect it to something that makes sense to then convey the story so uh it's it's fun you know i like i wish i could just be isaac would say it and i'd go we got five minutes are we gonna blow the hell up (laughs) yeah but John has to explain it. So it's uh, I'm glad they threw it at me and I can do it. Hopefully I'm doing all right at it. So, yeah. Speaking of Isaac, who you just brought up, you and Isaac have had uh, a lot of screen time together this season, which has been pretty cool to see. Uh, Mm -hmm. Even though you've been working with Mark Jackson for a while now, is there Mm -hmm. something difficult about acting with somebody whose face you can't see at all? No. And I'll tell you, Mark does such an incredible job of bringing of physicality to Isaac. And actually, if you go back and look at the pilot, and I didn't know where the, the story were going to go. But very early on, when, when Seth, when Ed is meeting the Orville crew for the first time, for some reason, I always had it where John liked Isaac, but he didn't trust Isaac. So when you look at it, John's kind of looking at Isaac's side eye but he doesn't, he's not mad. He doesn't hate him, but he's just like, I don't know about this guy. Something That's about true. Him. Yeah. You know, but it's, but I'm able to do that because Mark does such a good job of bringing Isaac literally to life. So over the course of the seasons, it's, uh, it's fun to work with, with Mark because, you know, Isaac just shoots it straight. There's no inflection. There's no emotion behind it, you know? So it's just, raw raw deal you know what i mean but uh no it's 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 always fun working with mark you know he's got to take his helmet on and off that takes forever but besides <laughs> yeah. that it's fun i i think we have to talk about it the tala and john kiss that just happened which i'm sure people have been asking you about already but uh should we buckle up for more romance between these two you know listen john was just trying to save gordon Okay, he was stressed out. The ship had been through a lot. Tala, you know, she saw he had a little crook in his back. She just wanted to help out. <laughs> um, you know, we'll see. It could be something that blossoms. It could be just a little, you know, heat of the moment type thing. But uh, you know, we, uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Speaking of that massage scene, so that had me rolling. <laughs> laughing out loud it like nothing has hit me on the show in quite some time that hard that yeah. dialogue could not have been all scripted you had to be like loose with that right yeah so <laughs> so yeah i actually texted seth the other day um and i, I told him 
when they cut, when we cut to that wide shot, as John is sort of making noises, to the wide shot of the engineering room. That's really what makes that whole sort of scene. Yeah, like, yeah, even funnier. But now they turned the cameras on, and you know, I, I sort of just kind of went with it. <laughs> but it was tough because I could see people <laughs> laughing, <laughs> sort of <laughs> off camera. So I was trying to like keep a straight face <laughs> uh, as I was getting the massage. But we got through it, and you know, that's <laughs> what we ended up with. Is there a lot of bloopers from this season that maybe we'll get to see at some point? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, that, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, there's it's yeah. a tough show. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of moving parts. You know, we don't nail it in the first go. Uh, so there are a lot of a lot of a lot of f bombs. A lot of yeah, <laughs> a lot of cussing. A lot of jokes. So <laughs> I'm sure you'll get a lot of those. Yeah. Like uh, like Scott, you're one of several actors on the show who had their character created with a little bit of their personality in mind. Do you feel like as John has evolved, has he moved further away from what you would say you are or have the two of you come into alignment a little more? You know, it's, it's really interesting. That's a good question. Um, I think we all have multiple sides of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and since Seth does know me, there is sort of the John that we met initially, but this sort of kind of leader, uh, difficult dialogue, explainer, that's also a part of me as a person. I, you know, my background is I went to school for piano and theater, but I was an athlete my whole life. So I've always lived in sort of two worlds anyway, you know, like the classical world and went to all Catholic boys high school tap ballet jazz you know that type of thing and then my dad lived in the city and i played basketball I ran track and i'm in a fraternity and went to a big 10 school so i've kind of always been able to kind of both languages per mm -hmm. se so john going from that to this is just another side of me jay lee i think as a as, a, as an artist so okay. it didn't feel too far out of out of my sort of range so maybe there isn't an answer to this then, but do you do anything to get into the character for John? John's very observant. I, I'm somebody who, uh, I, I want everybody to be okay at all times. I want to make people happy. I want to make people who got what they need. John is a little more quiet, very observant, but also just knows that, you know, A plus B equals C. And this is, this is how we have to get this done. So I think I, I try to make him a little more still. But it's tricky because sometimes he is funny, you know, and he is sort of loose. So I try to, when he's off, off the clock, John's a little more laid back. But when he's, you know, in a suit and engineering, it's, it's business. And I read every space book ever. <laughs> no. Like as John or as Jay Lee? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. As nobody. What's up, dad? My dad's here. Oh, no way. Hello, dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you want to come say hi real quick say hi to the people we always have time Lee. you know what yeah, oh, hey Hello. Blurry. step forward let me see there he is <laughs> it's nice to okay, meet bye. you up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what here's a true story john says boom jay lee i get boom from that guy goody lee i was gonna ask so yeah what is is it your dad says it does like is there more to that no, so he'll be like, I I'll give you guys both a okay. good elite boom for both of you. I'll start with Katie first. So if my dad saw you like, hey, like them headphones, purple and the yellow, hey, boom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Rob, he'd say something like, hey, Union Point, huh? Yeah, I used to play a little softball back in the day. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Love it. Now, I don't know. It could mean a bunch of different things. <laughs> Or it could just mean one thing, but I started saying boom because of him. And then Seth literally wrote it into the pilot and John now says boom. Oh, nice. That guy. nice. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm curious now that we're halfway through season three, which I can't believe we're halfway through season three. I know. I know. That's wild. What has been the most exciting thing for you to see since it's been released? I just think that where the show has come 
and what it is right now. I really feel like this is the show moving forward. And I think sort of really being able to sit in that seat um, and just be comfortable with what the show is. You know, first two seasons were great. I was proud of both of them. But then seeing this season is like, oh, oh, this is what that show is. This show is pretty, show is kind of dope, dope, you know? Uh, so I just think seeing it, and it's, it's a gift and a, uh, a challenge for it taking so long because you want to see it because we did it. But then you're removed from it and then you get to watch it and you go, you're watching it for the first time again, which is also special. So, you know, I don't know. It's just, I, I get excited every time the opening credits. Same. I, uh, I have to bring up Atypical Wednesday because as promised, I did watch it and thought oh, it was okay. great. Um, I did too. It was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, have your experiences as an actor, a writer, and a director informed or influenced each other in any way? 100%. Um, you know, doing Orville, like I had directed before and I had written some stuff before, and, but I made this movie, I made Atypical Wednesday in between season two and three of Orville because uh, I, I, I saw I had a window put it into motion and I was able to make it. Um, but I learned so much from being on the Orville and being able to look at Seth and John Kassar and Favreau who did our pilot and all the other directors, you know, when I wasn't shooting, I would spend a lot of time in the village and I just, you know, would ask questions and look at stuff. So, um, I think for me, uh, since I've done sort of every aspect of filmmaking from writing, directing, editing, acting, if something is needed in a scene, but it's sort of getting lost in translation, it might be something as simple as, can you just shift? Can you just shift? Because, you know, we'll have three cameras, boom, is in the shot, we got all these things happening, and everyone's trying to fix it. And then, Kassar is great at this. He's like, we need to get this thing out of the shot, and all of a sudden, people are moving, and Kassar is like, Jay, just, I'm like, just lean back, got it. And then by the time people realize I've leaned, or someone has leaned back, it's like, oh, we fixed it, okay, let's shoot. So I think being able to diagnose a problem, right, mm. and come up with the fix, John and engineering, right? Oh, here's the problem, here's the fix. I think when you're on set, it's like, okay, here's the problem. We're trying to fit four people into a shot. We're all looking at four different things. How can we make that look real? I know what it is. I'm going to make my eye line the grip guy. And, you know, but it'll still make sense on cameras. Yeah. But I hope that answers your question. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, how did you get your start in this industry? And did you always want to be an actor? Because you come from an arts background. Is this something you always dreamed would be a part of your life? You know, I never, I, I never thought I would be an actor. I always, it's a great question. I went to school for piano, like I said, and I broke my thumb freshman year. And uh, that's when I started taking acting classes because I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Mind you, I was still in the music school. My professor I came in, I had a cast on my thumb and I was like, oh, I'm going to lose my scholarship. I'm trashed. Right. And he's like, okay. And he hands me two books of left-handed repertoire, Scriabin and Bach. He's like, see you next week. So, so I just played with my left hand all semester, but I started taking acting classes. So kind of fell in love with the science of acting, you know? Oh, that's what this is. And, uh, I think from there I said, oh, I just want to do something you know, with acting. But then when I moved to LA, I ended up working at the front desk of some show called Family Guy. Never heard of that show. So then I started <laughs> writing because I had some downtime and I started making new projects. And more. So it is, it's, a, it's a very windy road to get to where I've gotten. But I've always wanted to make this place just a little bit better before I leave with the, the talents I have, which j just so happened to be in art. So mm. if I could do that through writing, directing, piano, acting, whatever, I've sort of done my job. Well, thank you so much for your contribution, Star. I know we appreciate them yeah. and yeah. we are uh, unfortunately at that time. But uh, again, just a huge thank you. It's always an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Oh, listen, Rob, Katie, you guys are great. Uh, like I said, we got some fans over here on the Orville side. So thank you. Oh, thank you. We're thank you. Huge yeah. fans of you. So thank you for taking the time today. 